So in my review of the Rocketech USB-C Hub, I did talk about ports and connectivity of this device, but I did want to cover those again real quick, simply so we can directly compare the capabilities of this device versus the capabilities of the two official Samsung uh, docks. So of course you have the USB-C plug that you're going to plug into your Samsung phone, followed by a USB-C port in the front. This is going to be used for power. It will charge your phones at the same time while you're using the Dex experience, as well as power the hub in general. Then in the center, you have a HDMI port, followed by a lone single USB-A port for plugging in a mouse, keyboard, or a mouse-keyboard combo, or any other accessory that uses USB-A that is compatible with the Samsung DeX. I haven't tested every USB-A device out there, so I will probably be doing videos in the future testing various devices, but today's video is just kind of focusing on the general experience. So compared to the two different Samsung docks, with the Samsung DeX Pad, which is $85 versus $25, you're gonna get an additional USB-A port and you're gonna get active cooling. The DeX Station for $150 adds a Ethernet jack and that's about it compared to the DeX Pad. So that's a pretty big jump just for an Ethernet port. So in my opinion, it's not really worth it. And the biggest thing here that you're gonna be lacking is that second USB-A port so that you can use a wired mouse and a keyboard, for instance, at the same time. So the way that I got around that was to simply use a simple, this is like five to $8, so you're bringing your total from 25 to around 32, maybe 35 to max, uh, and getting an additional, or getting four USB-A ports versus a single USB-A port, or the two USB-A ports that you're getting with the Samsung stations. So it's still much cheaper, and with this I was able to use a keyboard that I had laying around in, on top of the wired gaming mouse that I was using for my testing. And even though I had two devices connected and the wired mouse does have LED, so it's drawing more power than a standard mouse would, I didn't have any issues powering both of those devices and didn't have any losses of connectivity with the keyboard that I was using, which is simply uses one of the USB uh, wireless receivers uh, from Logitech. So all in all, for a very cheap sum of money, you can add additional USB-A ports to your hub, and that gets around one of the biggest issues. Now, you do have active cooling with both the DeX pad and the DeX station, but in my testing, this isn't really necessary. The only use case I could see this really being necessary is if you are going to be playing games locally on your device, but I did extended period of testing for about four hours solid. I did use different apps from Chrome. I did like a productivity test where I used Chrome, Outlook, OneNote, Word and Excel, and then I did some media testing where I used uh, apps like uh, Instagram and YouTube. And then I moved on to some cloud gaming testing where I actually used Shadow to try to play PC games from the cloud on my Samsung device. So for about a period of four hours, I pushed it pretty hard. Of course, that isn't nearly as hard as playing games locally, and the device was barely warm to my touch. So my phone had been has been much warmer in the past when I have played games on my device itself. So maybe if you're going to be playing Android games using the Dex Station or the Dex Pad, that might be more useful because you'll have active cooling. Uh, but for general use cases of productivity or just media consumption or even cloud gaming using the Dex experience, then I don't really see the huge advantage of active cooling. So to kind of summarize the direct comparison between the Rocketech USB-C hub versus the official Samsung DeX docks, the biggest thing you're going to be missing out on is the additional USB-A port. Of course, you can use that USB expander that I showed earlier. Uh, it's not as pretty as a overall package. It's a little bit of a Frankenstein's monster, but all in all, it's very usable and it's highly functional. It just isn't as pretty. Um, so... In that comparison, there's no, you're not really lacking too much. Active cooling isn't a big deal, in my opinion, except for select use cases. And when comparing this setup compared to the uh, very expensive Samsung DeX Station, the addition of a, or the lack of a RJ45 jack for Ethernet isn't too big of a deal either, simply because I did some testing on my Samsung device for Wi-Fi. I'm able to get about 400 megabit per second on my downstream connection, and on the upstream connection, I'm saturating my actual pipe out of my house, which I get about 35 megabit per second, and in my synthetic and real-world test, uh, for the synthetic, synthetic test, I used speedtest.net, and for the real-world test, I just uploaded and downloaded files from my OneDrive. I'm able to achieve around 38 megabit per second. I'm slightly higher than what I'm actually supposed to be getting from Comcast. That's a big shocker. Usually I'm a little bit lower, but all in all, the Wi-Fi chips that are in these Samsung phones are good enough that 
in most use cases, I don't see the point of having a dedicated Ethernet jack simply because you're going to be getting a very good Wi-Fi connection from your phone. Of course, there are going to be those select use cases where having an Ethernet jack could be nice, but for the general user, I think running straight off Wi-Fi is definitely going to be a good enough of experience. Moving on to the software side of this experience, this should be identical between the Rocketech USB-C hub and the official Samsung DeX docks. There might be some fringe cases where having the different hardware might be more beneficial, uh, but for the most part, the Rocketech USB-C hub should have an identical experience. So with that said, I broke up my testing for the software side of this experience into different app categories. The first of which was productivity apps. So the apps that I did testing in this category are Chrome, Word, Excel, OneNote, and Outlook. So all these apps function flawless. The only thing on Chrome I would uh, suggest is to run web pages in the, or to request a desktop uh, version on web pages. Uh, simply because you are essentially having a desktop experience and it doesn't make sense to use the mobile experience. But this does vary based on website to website. Some websites resize better to, to the resolution and even though it's on the mobile version, it has a very similar experience to the desktop uh, uh, web version. But that is heavily dependent upon website to website. So if you do have any issues like viewing the website, uh, then you can always request a desktop version and have a much better experience overall. And for websites that I did have any weird issues with, I did that and then the website in general didn't have any issues whatsoever. So in those apps, everything ran great. Outlook was great. It's nice to be able to respond to emails and stuff while on the mobile device with a full-size keyboard. It's much quicker. You can retype much more elaborate and detailed replies if you need to uh, with a full-size keyboard than you can with an on-screen keyboard, at least me personally. Using apps like OneNote and stuff is also nice with a full keyboard and mouse. And of course, Excel and Word are also great, especially if you're going to be typing up some type of report while on the go using Word. All in all, it's nice to have a full-size keyboard uh, instead of having to type longer reports or longer detailed responses on a, the phone itself. So all in all, on the productivity category, I think things run very well and it's a very good overall experience. The next batch of apps that I tested all fall in the media slash entertainment category. And these are apps like Netflix, Prime Video, uh, YouTube, and Instagram. So all these apps, the experience isn't nearly as good and vary greatly between app to app. So Instagram, for example, will only run in portrait mode and is not resizable, so it takes up a very small portion of your screen. Uh, so not a great experience, but if you're trying to do a couple things at once, maybe you just browse your Instagram feed and browse the web at the same time, you can always run the browser because that is resizable. So you can make it where the browser takes up like 80% of your screen. And then you have Instagram run and pretty much on the sidebar. That could be a use case, but it is annoying that you can't make Instagram full size. Another app that has a very similar experience to Instagram is Netflix. So Netflix will run in a wide screen or landscape, but it'll only take up about 20% of the overall screen, at least at 1080p, which is what I was testing with the monitor that I have. So it only takes up 20% of the screen. So maybe once again, you might run Chrome and have Netflix running. So you might be doing some research or just browsing the web while also watching Netflix. If that is a valid use case for you, it might work, but overall, if you're trying to actually play a Netflix video and watch it full screen, it is not going to be a great experience simply because it isn't going to take up the whole screen. You're going to be watching Netflix in a little bit box and you may as well be watching it directly on your phone because you're going to hold it more than likely closer to your face. Moving on from there, YouTube actually runs very good. It's more like Chrome. I think the Google native apps are probably going to have a better experience overall versus some apps. Uh, out there, but the YouTube app ran flawless. It ran just like my, uh, if I was running it straight off my phone natively. So all in all, a very good experience. And the next app I tested or tried to test was Prime Video and that does not run at all. When you click it, you get a little error message and it won't even attempt to start. So with that in mind, the apps in the media slash entertainment category vary greatly from app to app. So your mileage may vary depending on the type of apps that you're trying to use. But in this category, you're not going to have a great experience overall with Samsung DeX. It has been out for more than a year because it launched with the S8, and I've been testing on the S9, so I don't know if these apps will ever be updated to take advantage of the DeX experience. Maybe if user update continues to climb, and Samsung is pretty much the biggest Android maker, at least here in the U.S., so maybe if more and more users start to use the DeX experience, possibly with cheaper devices because the Samsung DeX docks are quite expensive, uh, maybe app developers might take advantage and 
have a modified version of their app for the Dex experience. But all in all, the media and slash entertainment category is going to be very iffy whether you're gonna have a good experience or not. So the final app category that I wanted to kind of touch base on is cloud computing and cloud gaming. And I'm really just gonna be skimming the top off of this topic because there's a lot going on here and there is a lot of possibilities here. But with cloud computing and cloud gaming, you can have access to very powerful computing hardware despite whether it's actually on your physical device. And this is where a device like Samsung DeX could really shine. There are some limitations. For instance, I'm used to having multiple screens and with the DeX experience, I'm limited to one. So there are some drawbacks, but if I was on the go and on the road, this could be a decent use case where I could remote into a, a computer back at home, for instance, or to utilize cloud computing and or cloud gaming to have an enjoyable experience while there are some limitations. So this is a very good glimpse into what, possible, what is possible in the future. But for my initial testing, I use Shadow, which is a cloud gaming platform, but you can use it for more than just gaming, simply because you have a full Windows desktop in the cloud. But I did some testing with some games and the results were quite varying. Games that lock your mouse cursor so that they can pan around with your camera. Those are generally first person games. So for example, I tested Realm Royale and Players Unknown Battlegrounds, PUBG. Both of those was not a good experience simply due to mouse issues. But other games like Rocket League and Jurassic World Evolution, uh, which aren't first person games or not traditional first person shooters, uh, those had much better results and only had maybe slight issues or no issues at all that I had to uh, find a workaround for to have a good experience. So for cloud gaming in general, the Android experience isn't great and the Samsung DeX experience thus isn't great either. There's a lot of work to be done in the world of Android cloud gaming and it's not nearly on the level of cloud gaming on a Windows device, but it does show some glimpses into what will be possible in the future. But I will definitely be covering this topic much more heavily in the future. I'll be talking about possibly video editing in the cloud, using the Dex experience, using like uh, 3D CAD programs. For example, I use Autodesk Inventor, but you could also use apps like SolidWorks from the Samsung Dex. Of course, once again, that kind of comes back to having multiple screens where to be truly productive, you'll want multiple screens. But as a mobile solution, this could be a very powerful solution and you won't have to pack nearly as much gear, which is very enticing, especially if you're going to be traveling via airplane where you're very limited on how much space you have on what you can bring with you. So all in all, some very good experiences if you're using Samsung DeX for productivity apps, especially if you use like Office apps primarily or like a CRM software such as like Salesforce. I didn't specifically test Salesforce, but that should function pretty good. Um, but if there are any recommendations or any requests rather for apps to test, do please leave, leave those in the comments. I will definitely be doing follow-ups to this Dex experience video. There's a lot of cool stuff here and it's definitely a cool glimpse of what is possible in the future. There are definitely apps such as Netflix and Instagram that could definitely use some work in the future to be truly viable. But all in all, it's a very cool experience so far and there are certain app categories like I was previously mentioning, the productivity apps that function very well already. And I'm excited to see where this goes in the future as this continues to evolve. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. I greatly appreciate your guys' support. Also, if you wanna support Thought Provoking Tech, I do have a Patreon which is linked in the description below. And also, if you're not already subscribed, make sure to smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Hey, and if you like the new setup that I'm working on behind me, do leave some comments in the description below. I'm also trying to work on audio, so let me know if that's any better. I'm going to be continuing to working on that, so I am definitely open for any suggestions. But once again, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, Zach out.